Hey, it's Jordan. Delighted to be joined by Steve Grumbine of Real Progressives. Uh, we've hit the crypto iceberg, apparently, uh, which I know you have a lot of thoughts on. Uh, I wanted to uh, first start, you know, obviously crypto is tanking, uh, Bitcoin and other crypto uh, currencies. Um, I wanted to start because to me, I'm not a sophisticated crypto person, but I found this interest, interesting that Celsius, which is one of the uh, top crypto brokers, uh, is pausing all withdrawals, swaps, and transfers between accounts, acting in the, quote, interest of our community is our top priority. Our operations continue, and we will continue to share information with the community, yada, yada, yada. Steve, I know this is deeper than uh, Celsius, you know, pausing things, but to me, it, it kind of has a deja vu to what happened with GameStop, where uh, the, you know, actual working class investors reverse rigged the game against uh, the Wall Street fuckers and were essentially, um, uh, one, two, uh, actually uh, rigged the game against the Wall Street Neanderthals uh, and were buying in bulk GameStop. And obviously then you had Robin Hood pause buying. Is it interesting to you that Celsius is all of a sudden uh, pausing swaps, withdrawals, all that as uh, the crypto iceberg has been hit? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you got a bunch of, you're right. You've got a bunch of different angles on this, and this is definitely one of them. It just proves that these libertarian people, and these are libertarians, man, this is libertarian paradise, right? They don't really believe in free markets. They believe in maximizing extraction. And that's what they're doing in this game because you know crypto is a damn Ponzi scheme. The wealthy only get wealthy because the little people buying below are willing to buy more of it. Say, oh, it's growing, so they'll throw money at it. Well, all of a sudden, once it starts tanking, and mind you, this stuff is propped up by the very currency they hate, U.S. dollars. And because inflation's on the rise, these people are running like scared rats off the boat and pulling their money out. So uh, an exchange like this says, oh, my God, our rich, wealthy investors are going to lose money if all the other poors drop out. We can't let them do that. It's kind of like the bank runs during the uh, Great uh, you know, Depression back in Wall Street. And you saw people jumping out windows. There is only so much in there before those people that the value, let's put it this way, the value that you see it priced at is only the value that it's priced at because that's what people are willing to buy it at. People aren't willing to buy it at that and they pull their money out. That thing just drops out the bottom. And there's rich people that were sucking the life out of poor people, hoping and praying uh, that this was going to be their ticket to freedom. Uh, you know, they're, they're going to stop that at all costs, man. It's just, it's a sick, sick, sick game. Right. Absolutely. And literally recently, I believe it was Kirsten Gillibrand and another senator <laughs> were telling people to invest their retirement in Bitcoin. This was like a week ago. So what, uh, I mean, that's kind of uh, bad advice considering uh, it seems the house of cars is falling. It, it would be enough for them to never be reelected again. Just that alone. That is such a malfeasance of public trust. I have never seen anything worse than what they did. I, I'm serious. And people don't realize how bad it is, but it's really, really bad. And uh, it's, she should definitely know better than that, but clearly, obviously, does not. And curse, it was Kirsten Gillibrand and Cynthia Loomis encouraging workers to invest their retirement in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Crazy, so, insane. So let me ask you because there was a lot of big, um, a lot of big, kind of um, highfalutin, grandiose talk about Bitcoin and crypto democratizing, uh, you know, investing and democratizing. Uh, stocks and allowing the little guy to, you know, basically uh, actually, you know, have have a chance at growth. I mean, you've been as bold to call it all one giant uh, Ponzi scheme. What's going on right now? Is this temporary as, you know, all these crypto stocks and uh, exchanges are free falling? Or is this the sign of kind of, in your view, the jig is up uh, and this is going to really uh, dissuade people from crypto? Now, I, you know what? I think it's a temporary thing. I don't know that this is ever going to be what people want it to be. I'm very sympathetic, especially to people like myself who don't have anything behind them that are, are dealing with major problems in their lives that hoped and prayed by putting some money in this crypto that it would make their life better. And for some, it really did. They were able to make the money and they were able to sell it off and keep that money and live life in, in, in the best way possible. But as usual, Ponzi schemes have a few winners and a lot of losers. 
Um, but the way crypto works is very interesting. These guys are masters of manipulation and masters of marketing, <laughs> marketing manipulation, right? All one word. Um, and, and these guys, they create an atmosphere that's exciting and so forth. So it's, I don't think that it's over. I think there's always going to be people that keep thinking about this, but it's never going to be what they thought it would be because it's based on vapor. There's nothing real there. It, it's just a big giant nothing burger that the wealthy at the top extract. It's just a different new wealthy doing the extracting, no different than Wall Street in that sense. Right. And, you know, I like to just be honest with the audience, what I'm what I'm knowledgeable, what I'm not. I'm not knowledgeable enough on crypto to tell you whether it was a Ponzi scheme or not. I trust you, Steve, and your knowledge. But one thing I will say to the very same people uh, ranting about the uh, climate inferno, rightly so. I mean, these crypto cr currencies are literally a growing uh, driver of the climate catastrophe, uh, the amount of electricity that is used to mine this crypto. Um, so I, I think people need to consider that outside of just the sky is falling in terms of a lot of these cryptocurrencies and exchanges. I mean, it's a dr huge driver uh, of the climate catastrophe, Steve. Well, the, what you got is different kinds of way of establishing value. OK, so what they've done in this initial phase, because libertarians being the whack-a-moles, they tend to be in this stuff, focus on this gold standard mindset. So they wanted to create a gold standard like thing. So what they did was they made you mine crypto. OK, so that mining activity, that scarcity that they baked into it is their way of replicating a gold standard in this digital uh, regime, if you will. <laughs> Unfortunately, what you've got here is they're shifting to different ways to provide that value. They're, they're moving away from uh, mining to a more uh, fiat based style type thing. It, it not, not peg based on mining activities. So it's possible that they could have a crypto in the future. That's not dependent on mining. That wouldn't be as uh, you know, resource intensive and bad for the environment. Uh, you know, there are digital things. There are things that are really, really good about blockchain. I want to be crystal clear. There are lots of really cool things about the technology and the underlying platform. As far as being a trading mechanism as a currency representation, they fail on 100 million different levels. And so if you look at what good it does, it provides a lot of avenue for, uh, div, you know, Div, uh, diverse uh, networks and and decentralized networks that that are really powerful and really good. So I want to be clear: it's not all bad about the crypto world. It's just all bad about this crypto Ponzi investing scheme over here on the coins, if you will. And can you break this down just for dummies, including me? Why is crypto basically a Ponzi scheme? And for those that don't know, when you hear Ponzi scheme, you think of Bernie Madoff, this and that, basically, you know, vultures and frauds, basically, you know, just recirculating people's money, uh, you know, and then investors believe, oh, wow, they're making me actual money. But at the end of the day, they actually are just circulating people's money and not actually getting organic profits. Yeah. I mean, bottom line is they've got a finite amount of this stuff. The rich bought it at a very low price. As new people come in and it bumps the price up, the old people extract their money out. The new people, it falls to the ground. They've got to depend on new multi-level marketing people to start buying their Amway product to boost it up again. And then once those people sell off, then they fall again. There's no way for everybody to win. It, it's rigged for only the people at the top to win. And they can keep doing the cycle repetitively where they, they suck the extraction out of the new people, they sell off, the other people end up falling to the ground, and they pray that the, some other sucker comes in and does it too. Otherwise, there is no value to their thing, their, their vapor. It, the, the, the actual, the, the real price of Bitcoin is zero. It's nothing. It's vapor. So that's, that's the deal. You got to sell someone on the dream for them to buy into their multi-level thing. And then once the top pulls out, it's over. So that's, that's why it's a Ponzi scheme. And uh, just circling back real quick on Celsius, which is one of the leading crypto uh, lenders, basically pausing everything. Um, how do you call this democratization of currency, <laughs> democratization of trading and all this when if shit's fall, if the sky is falling, they just change the rules as they go. It's basically the exact same thing that happened with GameStop, where if GameStop would have been if, um, you know, working class investors would have been able to 
keep buying up GameStop in bulk and keep screwing uh, those Wall Street and, and hedge funders that had shorted the stock, meaning bet it against GameStop, then that would have been a, opening a Pandora's box for working class uh, investors to do the same exact thing on other stocks. So, of course, Robin Hood working for Wall Street stopped the ability to buy. Why is this any different if the leading one of the leading um, cryptocurrency uh, lenders is doing a similar thing? It's not. It's exactly the same. There's no difference. None. Zero. It just shows that they don't really believe in the free market until, you know, as long as the free market allows them to extract from people, they're happy with it. The minute that it starts pinching on their profits, it's like, oh, my God, you got to do something. This is why, you know, the, the whole libertarian mindset of they want a government so small that they can drown it in a bathtub, yet they want it so big that it'll protect their private property with a gun. And this is their gun. This is their private property. This is their savings. And so that's king. That's all they care about. That's why it's happening. Exactly why it's happening. And I'll just I'll just note to you, uh, 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 boys and girls who watch the Super Bowl, I was like, every ad was a crypto, <laughs> uh, ad. a crypto exchange, a crypto lender. Hey, might have worked for those folks in at the time in terms of what do you what does it cost? Seven million for 30 second ads now in the Super Bowl uh, might not be working now uh, as far <laughs> as uh, that. Uh, thank you, Steve Grumbine. Uh, uh, also a host on Status Coup. Check out uh, Let's Get Ready to Grumble. Eight o'clock Thursday nights. Thank you. You got it, buddy. Thanks for watching and make sure to tune in to Status Coup's daily live stream Monday through Thursday at 5 o'clock Eastern Time and Fridays at 4 o'clock Eastern Time.